you just want to get this over with so you can get back to the mall, don't you? <laughs> oh, you're a nice mood tonight. Have you been out? No, you don't do no. your shopping yet. Have you been in one of the shopping malls at all? Yeah. Out here? Grim. It's like down cow in Calcutta with music. <laughs> Well, this is December 14th. Right. You know what that means? Only 65 more showings of It's a Wonderful Life before Christmas. <laughs> you're just, uh, you're just worn out from shopping, aren't you? You just don't want to let it out. This is, a, it's better to give than to receive, you know, folks. <clears throat> I'm the giver and you're the receivee. <laughs> Well, we live in strange times, really. Yes, we do. <laughs> to, how strange. Thank you very much. Today, the Surgeon General announced, introduced the first safe Santa. You want me to wonder how that works? <laughs> he, has, he has a Velcro lap, so your kid can't fall off and hurt himself. <laughs> what do I know? <laughs> you didn't tell me. Uh, <laughs> You're from Massachusetts. Yes, sir. You're from Oregon. Oregon, and I'm from Nebraska, and we're now living in California. Is Christmas a little bit different out here? Oh. It's weird. I can't yeah. get used to it. The temperatures the other day were 84. Um, in Malibu, it's really weird. Now, when I was back in Nebraska, you know, Santa would come slide down the chimney, put an orange in your stocking. Out in Malibu, Santa jumps through a solar panel <laughs> and leaves a kiwi in your Reeboks. <laughs> They had, sadly, they had to cancel the nativity scene in Malibu's uh, town square. There was a real estate boom last week, and the manger went condo. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd that laugh come from? I want to... Oh, uh, from the staff. And, <laughs> and this morning, I really got in the Christmas spirit. I saw a small group of Malibu children faxing Santa their Christmas list <laughs> from... From their car phones. It was very touching. Uh, I'm trying to get into it out here, but it, it's tough. In Beverly Hills this time of the year, they want to do something for the less fortunate. So they have the, they're collecting now for the foie gras drive for the neediest cases. <laughs> and... <laughs> No, they go around oh, in Beverly Hills. Uh, you live in Beverly Hills. We're close to Beverly Hills. They go around this time of year and give away coupons for tuxedo rentals to the neediest people. <laughs> is, there, is there a revolver in the house? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to keep plunging ahead because I know you're going to get into Christmas spirit. Um, I read today that George Bush is sending out 90,000 Christmas cards this year. Now, the big question is, will Dan Quayle finish licking those envelopes in time? <laughs> uh, thank you for your support. <laughs> Speaking of George Bush, the White House is going to have a new dog. What's the president's dog's name? No, Rex, yeah. No. Oh. Now I know what I'm up against. We got a cruel audience here. <laughs> no, it was Rex. They used to have Lucky. Yeah. Reagan's half. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying. The guy in the audience is scoring big. <laughs> No, Re they had Lucky. They sent him out to the ranch in Santa yeah. Barbara, and then they got Rex. Right. They're going to have a new... The dog is called Millie. Millie? Millie. Yes, yeah. Millie. <laughs> Millie. Now, you didn't know about Millie because he was kept out of the spotlight during the campaign because Bush was fighting that uh, wimp image. So they didn't want him to have a dog named Millie. He was replaced temporarily by a pit bull named Butch. <laughs> Millie's, <laughs> Millie's official duties will be the same as, as a Reagan's dog, and that's to pull the president away from Sam Donaldson's questions. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, sure. All right. 
How many of you saw the televised address of uh, Yasser Arafat address the uh, special session of the United Nations in Geneva? There was one small embarrassment. I don't know if you're aware of this, but apparently the airlines lost his luggage on the way over. And he addressed the General Assembly wearing a monogram towel on his head from the Geneva Hilton. <laughs> Didn't Reagan make his farewell address to some federal employees the uh, day before Reagan yesterday? He has not said goodbye to me yet. What? He has not said goodbye to me yet. He said to say goodbye to you, sir. Well, I'm going to say goodbye to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cruel crowd here tonight. <laughs> anyway, he talked about the Iron Triangle. Did you hear that? He was talking about the deficit, and the president says the deficit wasn't his fault. <laughs> A beep room went off in the audience. <laughs> See if you can call my writers on that damn thing. <laughs> I know you're, you know you're not doing well when a guy calls for the paramedics during the monologue. <laughs> 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 Anybody remember what I was talking about? <laughs> the president is taking no responsibility for the deficit. He said it wasn't his fault. He came up with the thing, the Iron Triangle, which was the news media, members of Congress, and uh, the special interest groups. Iron Triangle is kind of a catchy phrase. It'll probably be remembered by historians a lot longer than, you think, a thousand points of light. But a lot of presidents, I'm rushing along here. I, we, have, we have a busy show, and I, I shouldn't be doing this much, actually, tonight. <laughs> We got a lot of... <laughs> All right. um, outgoing presidents, for example. <laughs> like to um, like to warn us of the things. If you remember uh, President Eisenhower, remember when he was president of the United States? <laughs> he warned <laughs> That was, was quite a while ago, but uh, it, was, it was in all the papers. You must have read about it. And, <laughs> Eisenhower warned us of the, um, what the hell did he want? <laughs> That's right, the military-industrial complex, and Reagan warned us about the Iron Triangle, and Jerry Ford warned us about the third step, going up Air Force One. Remember, he said it a little. But anyway, but <laughs> Reagan... Why don't I give up? No. <laughs> because I'm show business, folks. That's right. Um, Reagan... <laughs> Reagan actually blamed the deficit on what he calls the Iron Triangle. Now, if I was going to pick a geometric figure to, to blame the deficit, wouldn't the, the Pentagon be better than a, than a triangle? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's, that's about it for me. You got anything? <laughs>